Honing can really be bad in Lost Ark. It can turn your account from super juice with lots of gold into super dry with no money, no materials, or nothing to your name. And today, I'm going to talk about how I got my account to where it is right now, rocking four characters at 1445 plus and two more at 1430. I will also preface this by saying I'm not a whale. I'm not opposed to whaling, I'm just broke IRL, so I can't, I can't be buying that type of stuff. But I did purchase the Arc Pass when that rolled around, so if that soils my reputation for you, I guess I'm sorry, but I'm not one of those cult members who's like praising free to play. But anyways, let's go ahead and talk about some honing tips. Just like the gold video, I have some bullet points that I'm going to go through for things that you can do on your account and in your journey through Arcasia to hopefully make your honing experience in the future easier. My first bullet point is to be very careful with your knowledge transfers and power passes. I feel like I especially can say this because I have used all my knowledge transfers. I don't have any more power passes. I once upon a time used it on like a gunslinger. I've used knowledge transfers on Deathblade, Bard, Sork, and lots of other classes that I don't have. I ended up deleting those characters. And now the reason that's important is because one of the main things you need when it comes to honing is time. The longer you prepare to take a character up to a certain level, right, the longer you have the them prepped at 1325 to go up to 1370 or at 1370 to go to 1415 the longer you wait the better your honing experience is going to be the more you rush the worse it's going to be that's why you see all those you know big streamers or youtubers who are dropping thousands and thousands of dollars to hone because they're doing it rapidly now going into the next thing right after knowledge transfers and power passes is to make sure you're focusing on one character at a time if you have some bound mats on another character and you want to try an upgrade or two to go for it but i highly recommend taking one character focusing on them that way you can use all of your resources between your account to funnel through that one character and this one can be kind of tough but it kind of goes together with the second bullet point is to make sure you have alts alts are a massive way to get tons of materials and tons of gold for your account which can help you in honing faster to give you a little bit of a timeline, my first character was my main, my gun lancers. I power passed my paladin, but I didn't work on him right away. I worked on my artillerist next. So he went up to like tier two after my main was in tier three. Then my paladin went up. I was still honing my main, got him to 1370, got him to 1385 for the stronghold research, right? I had my artillerist just sitting at like 1340 with mats, paladin sitting at 1340 with mats, had my zerker sitting at 1340 with mats, just chilling, waiting, waiting, waiting. Cause I knew at that time I was trying to prep for vault and I wanted to make sure my main was at 1415. The more you focus in on one character, the easier it's going to be. Now, another tip that some of you guys may not know about is to use the max roll calculator. So if you're not familiar with this upgrade calculator, I have it on the screen now and I'll go ahead and show you uh, kind of how we use it. So let's say we're going from 1370 to 1415, right? We're going to be looking at our T3 armor and our T3 weapon, right? The 1340 base stuff. And when we first transfer it, that goes from level six, right? And let's say we're going to 15 right? That's 14, 15 item level. Let's say we're taking all of those to 15. This is armor. We have five pieces of armor in total, right? That's what count is, right? You have your helmet, your chest piece, shoulders, whatever. Now you can check off if you have the research. In my scenario, I do. So I will go ahead and check these off. So once I do that, I can then pick, do I want worst case scenario, best case scenario, or average scenario? I don't know 100% how this exactly is calculated, but I imagine average scenario is like, let's say you're getting to 50% artisan energy. Worst case scenario is pity. Best case scenario, I'm assuming you like one to three tap everything. I usually go with average scenario just to get an idea. Then I'll go ahead and click add. And what this does is it calculates for me how much gold I'm going to need. This is raw gold in total. This isn't gold for buying mats. This is just per attempt with average luck, how much gold I'm going to need, how many shards I'm going to need, how many basic array of fusion mats, guardian stones, great honor, leap stones. These are all things that you can use to calculate. And this is also not including any solar graces, solar protections, or books. This is how people often calculate the best way to hone up your character, right? I'm sure quite a lot of you have seen when it comes to taking your character up to 1415, it is statistically more efficient to take two items up to 17 and then have the rest be at 12. There are some people that have even done two items at eight. 317 and like a third it's like there's super weird combinations it all depends on you right maybe you've gotten lucky on some pieces and maybe your armor is a little wonky here and there so you can do this for just one piece as well i'll go ahead and leave the link to this in the description so if you want to reference it in the future you can another big thing with alts and even on your main is to make sure you're doing your unis tasks or your unis tasks since people want to get on my case about that you can do three daily unis tasks a day for me personally i usually do hope island and then the two and phaeton if 
you haven't unlocked the Hope Island daily quest, it's extremely quick. It gives four leap stones, just like the Phaeton ones. I have Bifrost set up at all three locations. And so every day I'm able to get 12 leap stones just from the tasks, right? That's not including anything I get from my chaos dungeons, the events or anything like that. So let's do some quick math. If I get 12 per day times seven days, that's 84 great honor leap stones, which is a lot for free. You're not buying them or nothing. It takes no more than five minutes. And a lot of times you're not going to leave a character for just a week. Your character is going to sit there for two to three weeks. You're also going to be doing things like Argos and uh, Legion raids, Vicus and Valton. So as you can see over time, you're going to start building up those great honor leap stones, but doing your daily Unis tasks are a big part of stocking up. If you have a character that you aren't focused on honing right away, right? Let's say you have a character that you know, you're going to hone in the future, but you're not honing him right now. And he's not the next one in line either. Maybe you could set him up on low paying if you need the silver. But in the long run, if you plan on honing the character at all, I recommend starting the Una's tasks for leap stones as soon as possible. Another big thing is to take advantage of the event shops. When I first started playing the game early access, and when I first started to hone my character up to 1370, there was no events. All we had was islands and there was no tier three islands. We didn't have challenge guardian raids. Literally, we just had to do our chaos dungeons and buy materials. That was the only way we could hone. So you should be super, super grateful for these events, whether it's the Naruni racing, whether it's Maharaka, whether it's the event guardian, make sure you're participating in whatever it is to get you tokens, right? Luckily for the current event, you can just do chaos dungeons and guardian raids to get these leaves and make sure you're buying these materials if you need them for honing. As you see, I've already brought the, some of the tier three ones, right? There's free leap stones here, free honor leap stones. Even if you're in tier one and too, there's plenty of free stuff here for you. On to the next one, something I touched up on earlier is boss rushes, boss rushes and cube tickets. There are two weekly tasks that you can do that give great honor leap stones for boss rushes, right? So this gives 11, this one gives eight as well as some silver. And then the boss rush itself, when you open up the chest at the end, you get a good bit of leap stones. All that is gonna add up because you need a whole bunch of leap stones when it comes to honing, especially the higher you go. When you complete cube tickets, you get these protection mats, right? You get solar graces, solar blessings, solar protections you also have a rare chance of getting the treasure room where you fight the bat and when you defeat the treasure bat he drops more of these and at the end when you open the chest you have a chance to get more of the solar protections and the solar graces and all that stuff the more of these you get the better off you'll be right even if you're still failing upgrades with the protection mats you're getting more artisan energy per attempt which therefore means you're going to need less attempts and therefore use less resources going forward tying into the boss rush and the cube tickets if you're not already in a guild i recommend trying to get into one if you're on na east regulus and you would like to join mine we have some space we have a level five guild shop you don't have to join a guild with a level five guild shop but i recommend trying to find one with as high as a guild shop as possible don't worry about joining like some super hardcore raid guild but maybe there's some alt guilds that just have a, a upgraded guild shop for you that you could join the reason i mentioned that in every town there's a guild shop and in the guild shop you can buy these chests that have a chance to give you more cube and boss rush tickets you can also buy mats so at this exchange here here, as you can see, there is a Punica entrance ticket chest, and you have a chance to get either a boss rush, a cube, or 40,000 silver. I usually get the 40,000 silver, but my Berserker the other day, or yeah, like two days ago, got two boss rush tickets. That's more leap stones, that's more gems, and since I have a level five guild shop, you can buy three of these a week. I believe at guild shop level three, you can get two a week, and at guild shop level one, you're able to buy just one. But even if it's just one, that can help. There's also honing materials here, great honor leap stones. This requires guild shop three or higher. There's honor leap stones if you need those and guardian stone crystals. There's also destruction stone crystals, but I don't always buy them unless I have an excess amount of bloodstones. Real quickly, while we're on the topic, if you're unfamiliar, you can get bloodstones by supporting your guild research, donating, as well as doing your guild weekly quests. Now, another thing is I have two points on this is scheduled events. Now, my first bullet point is actually relative to adventure islands. Now, as you can see today, we have three adventure islands. We have Oblivion, Harmony, and Opportunity Isle. And Opportunity Isle is the island today that grants high seas coin chests. Now, why are high seas coin chests important? If you are unfamiliar, high seas coin chests are these things here. They give you, uh, you can pick genus coins, Skeptrum coins, Arcturus coins, Ancient coins, Sun coins. Now, there are lots of horizontal things you can use these for, like buying an Omnium Star, buying emotes, masterpieces, and stuff like that. But there's also a pirate shop, if you are unfamiliar. I keep on saying that. I'm sorry. I'm just trying to explain as if people don't know. You know what I mean? 
One of the biggest things that I did that helped me in honing early on when I did not have many alts, when I only had like two to three other characters along with my main was this pirate shop. I wanted to make sure that I got my characters to at least 1302 so that they could access the pirate shop as well. Outside of every port, you'll see the T and Libra guild vessel. You can go up to the normal exchange here and you can buy 900 guardian stone crystals here and it only costs 6,300 pirate coins. You can buy destruction stone crystals, but I don't think this is worth. It's like 10,000 pirate coins for only 300. So if you're extremely desperate, you can purchase it. I have purchased it before, but I usually try to stay with only the guardian stones and the honor shards if necessary. Also, if you're really close to a level up, you can buy the XP potions. I definitely brought quite a few of these when I was trying to get close to level 60. Just like today, Opportunity Isle gives high seas coin chests and pirate coins. Sometimes there are going to be isles or islands, I'm sorry, that give gold. So keep on the lookout for those because that's free gold. I believe it scales up with the highest item level on your account. So for me, my main is 1475 and from those events, I get 750 gold. Depending on the event, if it's like a PvP island and it has a leaderboard, the higher you go in the leaderboard, the more gold you get. So sometimes you get like 900 or whatever. Now, the next thing on the scheduled events that you guys probably already know about, it's Chaos Gates and Ghost Ships. Ghost Ships happen a few times throughout the week. You can only do one per week, but it gives a really good amount of Destruction Stone and Guardian Stone Crystals, as well as bound Solar Protection Mats. You can also get like Legendary Engraving Books, but I don't normally get those. But yeah, Protection Mats is huge. If you have a character that you're working on, you could definitely make sure you're doing the Ghost Ship on them. I usually just do it on my main. I'll pass over the Destruction and Guardian Stone Crystals, and I'll just keep the Bound, the bound Protection Mats for my main for the future. You can see a bunch of them here. They have them for tier one, tier two, tier three, and then later in tier three. And the chaos gates are big as well. If you have someone that's over 1415, if you do a chaos gate and you get a relic map, them joints give a lot of money, a lot of money. If you get a relic map and you strike gold, I think raw gold drop just 20K. It's like 18K gold. And then it gives you tons of honor shard pouches to sell. You also get unbound protection mats, solar protection, solar graces, um, and stuff like that. That's from blue maps, purple maps, legendary, obviously legendary and relic give the most, but you can still earn mats through these maps. You can also upgrade those maps. If you have blues, you can upgrade them to purple, purple to legendary, et cetera, et cetera. And now one of the last things I want to touch on today is your luck pattern. Now, at the end of the day, everyone could just say it's RNG, but let's be real. You've probably honed your character and you know with your characters where they are luckier and where they are more unlucky. For example, some people are really lucky on their weapon, but really unlucky on their armor. In my, in my case, my main was unlucky all the way up to 1370 item level. I struggled to get out of tier two. I struggled to get to 1340. I struggled to get to 1370. It was really, really, really bad. Even up to 1400, it still wasn't great. After 1400, my character's luck has been crazy. I've gotten pretty lucky aside from my weapon. I pitied my weapon basically to 20 and like 80% artisan energy to 21, but my armor has had really, really good luck. So far, when you notice your luck patterns, you should prepare accordingly to those as well. If you know your character usually struggles on the weapon honing, make sure you go a little bit out of your way to collect more destruction stone crystals and more protection mats specifically for that. If you know that armor is going to be where you're struggling, make sure you're extra prepared in guardian stone crystals. All of these things are things that I keep an eye on and do throughout my journey in the game and have helped me get to where I am right now. At one point, I was under item level. Argos had came out. I wasn't even 1370 yet i wasn't able to do argos until the second week that he was out but that was the only content that i have been behind on i've been working so hard on this account and i was vaulting hard mode ready when he launched i was vicus hard mode ready when she launched and i am already Kuku Seidon, Kaku Seidon ready for when he goes live. I also have characters that are now doing vault and hard, and hopefully my account is just going to get more and more stacked. And I hope that this video helped you getting your account more and more stacked when it comes to honing. If you have any questions related to honing, or if you feel that I didn't explain something properly, don't be afraid to let me know down in the comments below or over on my Twitch stream, twitch.tv slash Haiga. That link will also be in the description. Until next time though, I really appreciate you guys. I hope you guys have a good rest of your weekend. And I'll see you guys later.